Yeah, welcome to episode 13 of the Small Talk Podcast, the Grand Rapids Inform edition with a small and real estate team. Uh, today, we're here with Kyle Tiller, who um, has a, a business in the Grand Rapids area, um, hauling trash and dumpster rentals. The name of the business is called Dumpster Divers. Uh, and they have a slogan, your trash is our treasure. So Kyle, tell me how you got into the business. For sure. Well, that, yeah, thanks for having me, by the way. Yeah, it's, you're this welcome. Is, this is really cool. Um, so yeah, how we got into the business is uh, I have a business partner. His name's Emilio. And we both used to work at Two Men in a Truck together uh, back in the, when we were in college, actually. Okay. And, um, you know, you do that and you have your bosses and they're always telling you what to do, and you have the customers who are freaking out, you know. And so, um, as we were finishing up college, we got together, I went over to the Dave and Busters um, on the east side of town over there, and he slammed some beers, um, just trying to come, should we start a business, you know? Really? And um, so, yeah, we, we shot the idea around a little bit, and um, as we were trying to figure out what sort of industry to go in, we're try you're trying to, you know, we're comfortable with offering services. So we're trying to offer a service, but also be smart about the economic cycle and whatnot. Yep. And so we did a little research and we're like, Hey, the, the trash industry is kind of recession proof because if something bad happens in the world or the economy or whatever, you, there's still trash. And, you know, in the unfortunate event that people start getting kicked out of houses, like in 2008 and whatnot, then the banks are going to pay you to clean out the houses. So yep. we're thinking, let's do something where we're not going to put ourselves in like a huge risk. If you know, you know, uh, oh, auxiliary businesses, yeah. Start closing down all, all around you. It's like, we need to have something that will keep us smart. So, um, we were like, all right, let's do trash. Let's do removal, debris, whatever you might call it. Um, and then another, another session at Dave and Buster's this is the place to go back then. Um, yeah, check that place out. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good fun. Um, and we, we got together and we're like, okay, what, what about a name? You know, and we, it's really, it's like super hard to come up with names. And well, so, so what were some of the other ideas that you had? Is, did oh, you go right geez. into like trash business or? Did you? Yeah, that was the that, that was the one we chose, and we started to come up with names. Dumpster Divers was probably like the fiftieth name that we came up with, and so uh, you know stuff like Dumpster Dudes and um, Dumpster Pros, just like kind of cheesiest stuff. Yeah. And once we got into Dumpster Divers, we're like that. You know, if we got a logo, which we do, we got a little yep. a little Dumpster Diver on there. We're like, we could probably make that catchy. Um, which it is. People tell us like, like dumpster divers. That's cute. You know, yeah. it's like, Hey, that's what we're looking for. You know? Yeah. I think your, your logo, you should put the feet first. Like you feet, not bad, right not a bad idea. That. That'd be great. <laughs> but so you didn't have any other like ideas when you were getting started? Like it was straight from like, we should start a business to trash business. There was like, Th there were a couple of different avenues that, that we thought of. Um, but we were looking for something, um, I guess a, a secondary um, point of view from that is our industry is not very customer servicey. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the, the I don't want to call them dinosaur companies, but the older companies that have been around, um, they'll just kind of hire like a bunch of older dudes that are just, just railing cigs and just hopping out of the, when they drop off the dumpsters and they're like, where do you want this thing? You know? Yeah. And a lot of our customers tell us, yeah, I called two or three other places. They didn't even answer the phone. So we're just like, Hey, we just got to answer the phone. We'll be nice to them when, when we're talking with them. And then when we show up, you know, we'll be uniformed and we'll be nice, just nice to them, you know? Yeah. And so we figured we could kind of take, cause two men in a truck is pretty much like, like the cream of the crop in the moving industry. So we're like, if we can just take those same kind of principles and put it in this industry, then we'll probably just rock and roll. And that's kind of what's, what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, I've met a couple other people in the junk business and, that you're right. There is a, a huge separation between the people that are uh, doing it professionally and putting some modern spin onto it and yeah. the people that have been doing it a while. And uh, yeah, I, I had a guy one time um, that I, I hired to drop off a dumpster and the whole back of it was um, the dumpster was all gone and <laughs> out. And uh, he, his truck broke down in my driveway. Oh, and classic. I'm like, man, this is why I, I got a dumpster for $200, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I guess you pay for what you get. But mm -hmm. um, how long have you been in the business? So th this is a somewhat more of a complicated slash interesting story. So um, about the time we decided to do this, uh, 
I was afforded the opportunity, I guess you'd say, to go work at the corporate office of Two Men and a Chug. Mm. So this was like all happening right at the same time. And uh, so I was like, me and Amelia were kind of planning, and I'm like, I think I'll just go there, you know what I mean? Um, and just learn, you know, from great business minds, kind of learn how to build yeah. businesses and whatnot. Um, so Emilio in 2015 um, just kind of started Dumpster Divers, relatively unofficial. I mean, we got like an LLC and like all that yep. kind of stuff. Um, but uh, so he started with just a truck and a trailer. Um, his dad had a truck and a trailer that he wasn't using too much. So just kind of borrowed that. Um, and I went at the same time, 2015, over to Lansing, uh, worked in the corporate office. And um, as kind of time went on and Emilio kind of understood the way that the business works and whatnot, and we were doing just junk removal at that point. Uh by that time, he goes, okay, I got to figure it out. Let's start trying to get some loans, you know, so we can get a better truck, try to get some dumpsters. Now, we both went to Grand Valley. As I, well, I didn't mention Grand Valley, but we both went to college. So at that time, the banks were like, no, dude, we're not going to yeah. give you any money. Um, so we went, uh, took probably two years of just trying to get, you know, without ruining our credit scores, trying to get loans and whatnot. Really hard process. Um, and then at that time, at uh, Two Men in a Truck, I was my job title there was to help open franchises. And so I was learning all about how to start from zero and get to where you want to go. Sure. And uh, learned a lot about franchising, learned a lot about uh, helping people, you know, if they're going to say what their goals are, how to make that happen sure. in real life, yep. you know. And so uh, finally in 2019, so it took a little little while longer after that, we finally got a loan. Um, and it's so that, you stuck with it. Yeah, we yeah, it was it was a long time. And you know, you go through a couple periods where you're like, this is just never going to happen, is it? Like, how do people how do people start businesses? Like, I'm the, sure the banks at some point were just like, all right, stop asking, we'll give it to yeah, you. Yeah, if it finally happened for us, uh, we you know got a little business history behind yeah. us, so that did help. Um, and then so we finally. Finally got the loan and Emilio calls me up. He's like, we got it. Like, come back. It was like, it's time. So then I came back from Lansing. Um, and in 2019, we got that we had one truck uh, that we bought with a hook lift on the back. And we bought yeah. nine dumpsters. Nine. Yep. So in 2019. And then, uh, so I'm in charge of like the operations and the, and the marketing part of it. So I just took, I went to school for marketing. So yep. I took the chops. I said, all right, we're about to go zero to a hundred, get ready. And people just started calling and calling. So we really kind of took off. And then in 2020, we bought one more truck and 21 more dumpsters. Wow. So now we're, we currently sit at two trucks and 30 dumpsters. Um, in December of this year, we're going to buy another truck and probably like 15 more dumpsters, roughly. Only 15? Yeah, it's, there's kind of like a, I shouldn't, don't take this as a tack if, if you work for another dumpster company. Uh, the business models that are employed by other uh, dumpster companies are very inefficient. Well, they'll have like five trucks and like 200 dumpsters. Okay. And you can't, you can't do it. You know, you have, you have to leave dumpsters places for like, 20 days or like two weeks, three weeks, because you can't get back to them in time because you don't have that many trucks. And so we kind of developed our business model to be like, you have basically 15 dumpsters per truck okay. and you can flip them you know, fast enough to be able to get them out of people's driveways and not just have them sitting there for, you know, whenever you can get to them again. Yeah. So the dumpsters, you, you have 30 of them, they kind of hook onto the trucks like, like a trailer? So the um, the hook lift, uh, the first truck that we got, we bought the truck. It used to be, I think, a party bus back in the day. And um, we bought the hook lift separate and kind of rigged them together. Okay. Um, but the hook lift, essentially, you operate it with a couple levers, and it kind of tips back and then grabs. There's a hook on the front of the dumpster. Yep. And um, then you pick it up and just set it on the, the truck. So okay. um, it, we're, we're, uh, we, don't, we, have, we still have a trailer and um, like we can use either of our personal trucks to drag that around if we need to. But most of the time we're just using the dumpsters. Okay. So um, what's the craziest thing you've like found or do you just, or do you just like drop the dumpsters off? Are you filling the dumpsters? Or so like we do a little bit of both. Um, most frequently we're doing dumpster rentals. Uh, it's just the quickest turnaround. And, you know, a lot of people, it's the cheaper option for the, for the customers. So uh, most of the time I'd say 
70 percent of the time we're doing dumpster rentals and we'll just drop them off okay uh, people can hire us for full service junk removal too and most of the time we just bring a, a dumpster with us and we um we just charge by how much stuff goes into the dumpster um, but that's that's very full service that's very like two men in a truck ish where you know we're we're former movers so you know if we're taking some dressers or some fridges out of the house we're not going to hit the walls yeah. which is not a guarantee coming from you know if, from a different company maybe and um, but yeah then we'll take all the stuff right there load it up kind of calculate how much stuff it is just charge them from there and then we're just on the road okay and you you're loading up dumpsters and taking off the trash so how big yeah. of an area do you serve so we go um we call it greater grand rapids um, most of our business will come from wyoming kentwood grand rapids type area sure um, but we go all the way up to rockford cedar springs sparta area up there because there is a landfill on 10 mile right in yep. rockford there we go as far east as lowell most of the time um south to wayland although um we can we can go further outside of these areas just depends how, how many miles it is we do attach a fuel surcharge sometimes because you got to pay thousands of dollars a week for fuel these days yeah. um and then on on the west side we'll go over to holland and whatnot okay how are people finding you are you doing like Online, you said you're a little bit more like modern tech savvy. Are you doing like online advertising or? Yep. Um, so we um, we hit Google pretty hard. Um, when I was at the corporate office of Two Man Truck, I learned I was knee deep in um, you know pay per click advertising and yeah. AdWords and whatnot. So learned a lot about that and how to target not just every person in the world to just click, click, click and pay for it. So we, we kind of tailored our PPC campaign to like get the people that are going to use the service. Um, so we were heavily in PPC. Um, we do podcasts a little bit, um, with the Eric Zane show. Um, sure. he used to be on free beer and hot wings oh, back in the Eric. day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right on. Yeah. And, uh, so we, uh, we sponsor him. And so he brings me on the show every Thursday at 9 AM and really? we just talk about stupid stuff and okay. just joke around, but kind of gets us in to like a different audience of people who are you know maybe at work just kind of listening in um and then the one of the bigger things that we do is facebook videos uh we you know we'll, we'll run like some facebook ads and whatnot too to like direct you right to the website but i started this thing shortly after 20, 2019 when i came back um where i just make stupid videos just to either catch people's attention or make them laugh, which most of the time has nothing to do with dumpsters or dumpster divers at all, just like things I see while I'm driving around. So just a bunch of stupid videos and um, people find us that way just as they're scrolling at Where night. Where do you get that idea from? Um, really just school. Uh, okay. I learned, I, I went for advertising and public relations and marketing and whatnot. And uh, I think if you're a smart cookie, you realize when you're in that program that you hate advertising and kind of how it is, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to make cheesy commercials. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to follow the traditional route. I was like, I just want to make people laugh, uh, which is kind of what I do in life in general is just bring joy to people. It's like yeah. one of my favorite things. Um, so I was like, I just want to make stupid videos, make somebody laugh, um, you know, have them click on the video so they see our name and whatnot. And I was like, then, you know, maybe three, four months later, they're like, oh, hey, I need a dumpster. And they remember me from the video. Sure. Because, you know, I'm out there cruising a lot and I'll get people honking and I'll look over and they just like wave, you know, because they, they just see me in the video. Yeah. So um, I just try to make, yeah, make it like where uh, they think because I'm on the TV screen per se that like, you know, I'm just like a figure. Well, they know you, right? Yeah. Like so they get to know connection. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's actually a, like I don't know that you realize you just did this, but you brought up a really good point. Like um, a lot of people take jobs um, and they look at it as just a paycheck, right? I'm just going to make twenty dollars an hour, five dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, right? Um, but you took the the money that you were making and took the knowledge that you were gaining from that job and applied it to your future, right? And um, I think that's really cool, like to be able to take something like that and experience like that. And how can you um, use those experiences in your business and your life to make make it a better um, opportunity for you? Yeah, so. I'm with you on that. It's a, I think I think a lot of the stuff you learn in college is very heady, you know, and it's like, oh, you got to find opportunities and exploit it. But they don't tell you really how, you know what I mean? But that's kind of how I viewed it is. Like, hey, this industry could use us, you know, and that was kind of the opportunity that we saw and just dove in. Yeah, it sounds like it's working out good for you. So um, 
what what is the craziest thing that you found in a dumpster? I asked it earlier. Oh, you we didn't did, get yeah. to that. So, yeah, there's uh, there's been some wild stuff. Uh, people always uh, kind of <laughs> some weird. You'll meet some weird characters out there, and uh, you almost know sometimes pulling up. You're like, I bet this person is going to make the joke that if can they throw bodies in the dumpster, and people. We haven't found any bodies. So I just want to make that make that clear. But a lot of people make the jokes. So you're like, okay, they're going to throw some interesting stuff in there. Um, and we found uh, most of the stuff we look for is like recyclables or yeah. stuff we can donate to like Habitat or, you know, Goodwill and whatnot. Um, so we'll ask people to put those in the back of the dumpster. So we have found um, like uh, I found foreign money, which I thought was cool at the time. Turns out it's old and not worth anything so, you know yeah. so what can you do about that but we found uh like in the ada area there's like a lot of people out there who have just extra spending cash and this one guy got rid of a smoker that was perfectly good and he just said he's like i got a new one so i don't want this one so we take that out and we got like a little storefront um in our office where we try to resell stuff that we can cool and so yeah so we resold that um i found like an old antique uh sewing table which uh, apparently, and I've I researched it, someone just needs, I don't know how to do it. You have to like refinish it and kind of make sure it works. Yeah. But they could sell it for like 700 bucks. So I keep trying to sell that for like 100 bucks. You know what I mean? Take like, it. yeah, somebody, somebody come take it. I don't know how to refinish. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have rental properties and I just had a tenant that left like two couches, three chairs. I just put it all on the front porch and said, come get it on Facebook. But it's good that there's like people like you that are, like not letting it go to landfills, right? Yeah, that that's really one of our main goals is the landfill that we primarily go to on 100th Street and Byron Center. I think that they put like an expiration date of maybe 2030 is when you it's going to be full. Yeah. So we're, we're just like, why put stuff in there that doesn't need to be in there, especially if we can donate it or recycle it or make a little extra cash off of it. So we try to keep as much stuff out of there as we can to kind of prolong the life. Um, plus, you know, people are... I shouldn't say this either, but a lot of companies uh, you, uh, you'll see on their website, like, hey, we're recycle or we're 100% green or whatever. But mm -hmm. you, you're, you're with them at the top of the landfill and they're just dumping, you know, a bunch of metals in there, a bunch of stuff. You're like, that's nice stuff, you know. But again, like the, the business model is not really made for stopping and taking things out where yeah. ours kind of is. So, um, yeah, we, we, just, we just try to recycle as much as we can because there's no point in putting it in the ground. So what's the biggest difference between you and let's say like, the big guys, one eight hundred got junk. I sure, should give them a plug, but I did, did I? <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a that's a solid question. Uh, we just this year, and we've been trying to do it for a long time. But we had to find the right software um, this year for both uh, um, our dumpster rentals and junk removal. You can go on our website and just order it like a pizza. So you really? don't you don't have to talk to us. I, here's what I find if I'm being realistic. A lot of people who rent dumpsters are mostly first timers because not a lot of people are hoarders. There are out, they're out there, um, but like not like everybody is a hoarder. So a lot of people that are renting the dumpsters are first time like renters, and it's intimidating. You know, you're like, I'm gonna call this company. You know, they're gonna, I'm gonna feel weird. You know, yeah. And so we give them the option, just like, hey, it's really easy. Just you know, call. Not you don't have to call us. Just like you're ordering a pizza online. Order what size you want, what dates you want. It'll tell you the price. You can sign a contract online where you can read through what can go in and what can't. And you can pay online and we'll just show up and drop it off, answer your questions, you know, stuff like that. And then the same thing with the junk removal where people can kind of list out what they have. Um, and what, what we'll do is uh, either ask them for pictures um, if it's not in the form or whatnot. Um, and we'll just text them a quote. So that's like the biggest difference in terms of like 1-800-GOT-JUNK. They just, they just do the junk removal. And their model is very much, we got to come out there and look at it. So they'll have the guys come out in the truck and they'll come out there and look at it. And this, this is actually public knowledge. So this isn't like me like using slander or anything like that, but they charge a lot, There's like a lot per cubic yard. And so they'll kind of come out. Man hours. And yeah. Truck hours. And they're a huge nationwide company. Yeah. So I get it. Um, but they charge way more, like, like twice as much as we would. And so they'll, they'll come out there and they'll, look at your stuff and tell you how much it is. And we've had people tell us this at, at, when they've used us, you know, they're like, then they just kind of stood there and kind of made me feel like I had to say yes, like right there. Cause they'll just do it right there. And so there's like a lot of pressure kind of put on uh, to, to kind of, you know, like, 
all right, I've we're been here. in those situations. Yeah. For sure. So so we're we're very much just like we'll just text them and be like, hey, you know, if you can send over some pictures, you know, I'll just tell you within like 10, 20 bucks about how much it's going to cost. And, you know, it's text. So like, we're not even like pressuring them on the phone, like with timing, like, hey, this call has been going two minutes. Like, what do you think? So we'll just text them and they're like, oh yeah, that sounds good. You know, we'll go out there and do it. Um, And then in terms of dumpster rentals, kind of what I was mentioning before, if the other companies are going to answer the phone, they're just going to be like, okay, this is how much it is. Do you want it or what? You know, yeah. The next mu- guy might get a different price. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, been there. Yeah. So all of our stuff, it's very, it's very, like you said, tech savvy. Before, where it's very much like you can kind of control your own destiny and you know book your own dumpster, book your own junk removal. We do also offer demolition services uh, where you do kind of have to go out there and look at the project and sure. kind of figure out you know how many walls is there actually behind this first wall so yep. there's th- that takes a little more of like an on-site consultation um, but also you know we go back to the office and calculate it and then again just text with them to kind of take the pressure off has there been anything that you've like uh went to see and you're like oh that's too disgusting i'm not going to touch it so uh retroactively yes we ha- we have done some hoarder situations where um you all of a sudden you're digging digging through this train we got the full suits on the, yeah. the hazmat masks and everything and you're like hey what are these uh what are these jars and it's jars of pee that's what oh, it is man. you know we, what I mean? we actually had a uh um uh one of our agents actually went through a house a listing and uh there was bottles near their bed and uh, he took a picture of it, but it was pretty disgusting. They're trying to sell their house, and it looks like that. Yeah. But. So yeah, we've had like retroactively, where we're, you know, we look back and we go, either we got to charge a lot more for this type of stuff, or we just, if we're seeing bo- like feces um, or you know pee or like any type of that, it's like maybe we don't do it. You know, maybe because yeah. there are companies that are like specifically designed for like hazmat situations like that. So we had had a couple calls like that where we're like, maybe we don't do that because that's pretty gross you know what i mean have you uh thought about like hiring goats and just like uh, unleashing a herd of goats on their house (laughs) for sure i'll I'll eat anything yeah you probably don't gotta pay them very much you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) um you do anything else that we haven't maybe talked about uh yeah so those are our primary three uh we have done you know just kind of uh off the cuff moving where if like somebody's like will you move this stuff to my nephew's house or whatever cool um we we can because we have the experience uh we just we don't advertise that or do that very much because you know we're pretty busy with the dumpsters and the other stuff yeah but you know we've we've had like some family friends that are like hey like i need i just need your help we're like okay we'll help you out um but yeah those are our big three things okay well it's good that i think the new generation is a lot of on demand and everybody wants to know prices and without talking to somebody. Right. Yeah. I think it's great that you have kind of a system set up for that, that people can get on your website, see what you offer and it's transparent and honest. Right. So yeah, those are definitely things you have going for you. So, um, have you always lived, um, in Grand Rapids? So, yeah. So, uh, both me and Emilio grew up, uh, I grew up in Wyoming and he grew up yeah, like Wyoming. I think it's Wyoming too. Yeah. Wyoming, Kentwood area. Okay. I, you never know where the lines and the zip codes. Could and, be Grand Rapids. Yeah, you know too, what I mean. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so yeah, we both grew up here. Uh, we both actually went to the same high school, um, but he's a little bit younger than me, so we're not at the same time. Where'd you go? Uh, Rogers when it okay. was there. Now it's Wyoming. Yeah. High school or whatever. Uh, so we both went there, and then we both went to Grand Valley too, um, and then we both worked at Two Minute Truck. So. We, we've kind of always been around each other and kind of interacting yeah, kind of crossing. We, yeah. We just got, we just get along, you know? So we're like, let's do it. Let's just start a business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but aside from when I live in Lansing for a couple of years though, I've, I've always been here. Okay. So you lived in Lansing. So you went to um, Lansing for school or what do you go there? Well, for? When I worked at the corporate office. Truck. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I just got an apartment out there and lived there for a while. Lansing's not as cool as Grand Rapids. How did it compare? If you ask me. It's just like, I don't know. It's like the infrastructure seems older, which is wild because it's the capital. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And they got like weird highway setups where there's one point where like three highways converge in one area. And it's like, you're not going to get anywhere you need to go if it's a certain time of day. Yeah. Plus you got MSU out there, um, which, and I'm not saying anything here, but there's a lot of international <laughs> students that come and they just get cars and okay. they're just 
whipping around and they're either no turn signals and you know red lights are a suggestion you know so it's just it's crazy to drive out there really um but grand rapids is you know obviously we have like the devos and the van andals who have kind of built up the town since the late 80s or whatever yeah. my dad grew up here too and he was like yeah in the 80s you did not go downtown grand rapids there's no point and it's kind of dangerous down there but our our downtown's awesome so yeah. it just seems it's like way more modern slash updated where if you go into downtown Lansing, there's just not that much stuff to do, really. Yeah, I grew up in Grand Rapids in um, in the '80s, and I spent a lot of time downtown, and it was totally different. Yeah, we would, we would ride our bikes through buildings and <laughs> see if, how far we could get in the skywalks with with bikes without getting kicked out, yeah. and we could spend all day down there and not get in trouble. So um, it's a totally different place. Yeah, the, the police station used to be a mall. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I so I mean, that. lots of lots of cool history. Where the um, the the uh, the boss performance center that that used to be the courthouse like uh, everything I has can been see it I can around. see it but um it's in interesting about East Lansing or Lansing right like what that is like and that's actually um not our first state capital our original state capital I believe was Detroit and they wanted a more yeah. central location and yeah Lansing was in the middle of the woods so it's it's you know um. Maybe it has been updated since. They, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel as there. good. So, cool. Well, what's um like? What are your some of your favorite things to do or um go in Grand Rapids? Yeah, so I am uh, a newer dad. So I had my son. He's congrats. He, thank you. He's gonna be two in February. So since he was born, I don't do anything. I just I just uh, hang out with him and uh, be a parent. Really. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that that takes most of my time, which is awesome. Um. I do like to like play guitar and okay. you know like. I have a couple of buddies who I was in a band with, a very terrible band. All right. I don't even need to talk about it. Um, but um, I, those buddies will meet up and jam, you know, every once in okay. a while and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mostly am just like your your average dad. I just watch the Lions get kicked kick their butts, you know, every every Sunday, um, and that's pretty much it. Just just a fam, just a good old fashioned family man. Okay, what do you still live in the Wyoming area? Where do you live now? So yeah, we uh, bought a house in Allendale, actually, kind of oh, like nice. right okay. by the. Grand Valley campus out there um, and I so I went to school out there and I was always like I could never live out here and then and, you did yeah and here I am yeah I'm just like I'm living in Allendale you know okay. what I mean uh, but it's it's nice it's like a nice little subdivision I'm just off 52nd um, right by the campus there and it's sure somehow quiet like you, you never hear anything which is wild because yeah, my mom lived back there for a while a uh, street called Melanie okay yeah I know yeah. exactly where that yeah. is she she now lives on Skipping Stone Lake, which is like on the way out there. Still, yeah, so, yeah. I, I go to Allendale a lot. Like it out there. I actually live um, uh, Lake Michigan Drive in Coble. Okay, so, yeah, right on, right over um, there. I like being central and close to the highways, and I like Allendale. But driving twenty minutes to get on the highway. Um, that was kind of the reason for us not going out that far. For sure. Yeah, you know, when I moved back from Lansing, I lived in an apartment down, right downtown in one of the old houses that got converted or whatever. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm downtown. It's going to be cool. And then you just like, it just noises all the time. And the people that live below me would like get in fights and stuff. And I'll, So now I'm just in a quiet area. And I'm like, okay, I, I do like this. You know, yeah. I'm 33 now. So I'm like, yeah, hey, I like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I think, you know, as, as you get older and your kids get older, you're going to, different things are going to be important to you. So yeah. that's cool. Um, so um, what would you say about somebody moving to the Grand Rapids area? I know you lived in Lansing for a little bit. What would you say to somebody that's thinking about moving to the Grand Rapids area? I'd say do it. I think that, you know, I've, I've, when I worked at the corporate office of two men in a truck, uh, my job required me to travel around to these cities where people were opening up franchises and whatnot. So I, I've seen some cool ones. I've seen some not so cool ones, but I like Grand Rapids because it's, I call it whatever way you want to call it, either a big little city or a little big city, you know, kind of however you, sure. whatever way you view the glass, you know? Um, but that's what I think is one of the best parts about it. Where like, if you're in downtown Grand Rapids, you're like, looking up at the buildings and it feels like a big city, but you could walk to the other end in like 20 minutes, you know? And so I like that. So it's a good way for people who want to be close to the action, but don't want to, you know, ride a subway or whatever, or, you know, in like New York city or Chicago or whatever, or, you know, that I don't know, like 
violence or crime rates or whatever but i feel like grand rapids is safe-ish you know what i mean i feel yeah Yeah. i I feel like nothing crazy yeah Yeah. like nothing crazy crazy is going on and so you know you then you got the the college campuses right down there you know so you're gonna have people out and about which is nice you know you probably wouldn't want to live in a like a downtown area where nobody's ever outside or doing anything because that'd probably be kind of creepy i feel like um but yeah i'd say i'd say do it because you know you're gonna find a good a good mix of people that that are pretty chill yeah there's i mean i that's why what i love about grand rapids is there's lots of different people and experiences and i think people come here and they bring their own like element and share it with people right the Mm -hmm. art the the food um the entertainment things there's just so much to do in grand rapids and that's, yeah yeah so have you done a lot of traveling or yeah so chicago and new york yeah so um i'm when i was a kid most of the traveling was like my parents had a timeshare of course because it was yeah. the 90s so yeah. it was like go to florida go to colorado those are like the two places we'd go primarily so i did a lot of that but when i got the job at the corporate office, it was like everywhere, you know, I've been out to California. I've been to Fargo, North Dakota, which was weird. <laughs> you know, it really? was like February and it was like negative 20 degrees. Okay. It's a different type of cold over it there. Sounds like the UP. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it was wild over there. Um, but yeah, I got the, I spent a month in New York city helping a franchise open. Um, yeah, been to Chicago, been to some of the Ozark type States down okay. there. Um, so yeah, I've seen a, a pretty good, a great deal of the U.S., but like you know, you get to see different, different cultures and different you know landscapes, which is which is pretty cool. So as dumpster divers uh, gets bigger and expands, do you see yourself like moving to a different area, or would you just franchise out in that? Yeah, so we would we would make our home base here for sure, um, just because we think it's cool. You know, if if we become which we will, you know what I mean? Oh, but it's, yeah, it's like yeah. if we become like a huge, you know, we're a national company, maybe international if, once we figure out how to do that, that type of stuff. Um, it's just cool to be like Grand Rapids is the headquarters, you know what I mean? I, and I'm, you know, there's like Amway and whatnot. Yeah. So there's like Why not? some businesses around here that are like that, but it's like, no, like dumpster divers or whatever we're going to have to call it eventually. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, we're in the process of franchise. We're trying to get ready to franchise now. Sure. Um, and we did find out we're going to have to change our name eventually because oh, there's a, somebody else trademarked it and they live in like Colorado dumpster divers with a Z. Okay. And so the lawyer's like, yeah, it's too, con- it's going to be too confusing. So you're going to have to come up with something else. So we're trying to figure that out now, but um, yeah, the plan is to franchise and be all over the U S um, offer different options to business owners and you know where you can buy up a whole city if you want because you know even in grand rapids we could probably have four yeah yeah yeah. we could probably have like four or five in the grand rapids area if you really wanted to just based off of traffic and you know saving your fuel because there's you find out there's houses everywhere man like everybody everybody needs you know trash removal so it's um you know where there's houses, you can have one. So, you know, we could offer, you know, buy up a whole city, you know, or buy individual territories. Heck, buy up a whole state if you want to, if you're, if you're a super rich dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's, uh, we're working through that now. And then, cause our, the, one of the main goals of dumpster divers um, built into our business model is we're just two regular dudes. And we started it with $0. And so our business model is built to be like, for regular dudes who didn't think they would ever be able to own a business or do, you know, be the big boss or whatever, you know, they're just like, ah, I'm going to be stuck at a factory or stuck at, you know, bounce around at jobs or whatever. So we want to, we, you hear a lot about like middle class, like the middle America or whatever. And Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it's disappearing and whatnot. And nobody's doing anything about it. You know what I mean? The politicians are all like, oh, we're going to try to, they're whatever. They're not. So our goal is to try to, um, advertise the franchising part of it to just regular people across the U S you know, um, and have mostly just like two guy teams, like, like how we started it, just start them up in anywhere USA, you know what I mean? And just give them the opportunity to grow it and be, you know, become wealthier themselves and then try to rebuild middle America that way, like tangibly, like actually doing it. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Are you going to have a way to do it without a lot of out of pocket, cost yeah yep so we've um as part of the process have kind of identified how much it costs to do it um and the 
relationships we've developed with like lending partners and whatnot is where your net worth doesn't have to be that much to start off with. Yeah. You're probably going to end up b borrowing money because, you know, it's just the way it goes. Um, even like, you know, wealthier people, like, especially at Two Minute Truck, even if they're starting up, you know, another one or whatever, they're borrowing money too. It's just kind of the easiest way to do it, to leverage somebody else's money, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've identified that it doesn't really take you don't have to get that much in terms of loans to get like the base of the business going. So yeah, that's nice because it's not a very complex business. It's just dumpsters and junk removal. You know, you don't, yeah. you don't, we have a software in place already, which is nice and cheap. You can you just use your, that. yeah, you know, you can use your cell phone as like your business phone and you can, a lot of things you can leverage that you already have in your life and whatnot. So it, we, we feel like it's a, a good way to start a business without having to borrow $250,000 or something like that, you know? Yeah. In the real estate world, I heard that if there's a dumpster in the driveway, they're either moving or they're doing a remodeling project. Is, do you see, think that's true? Yeah, I would say most of the time, um, you know, you, there's like some intangible ones. Like sometimes um, we'll get a lot of calls from people whose parents have died or whatnot. And so it's not even their house, but they'll rent a dumpster and they're like, we just need it over the weekend because we're just cleaning out the and they're going to sell it. So and they're going to sell it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, you're right. I guess yeah. they, it's considered moving. Um, but that's actually one of the things, um, it kind of alludes to one of your former questions. One of the things that makes us different than other companies is we're like, we, I, I like to say we democratize the, the waste industry or whatnot. So a lot of, if you were to call a, a different company in that situation, like my, you know, my parent has passed away yeah. or we're moving that dumpster is going to sit there for like three weeks, you know, and they're going to give you like a 6,000 pound weight allowance or whatever. So if you call around, you're going to be like, oh, 6,000 pounds is like the standard or whatever. And you know, that sounds good. Whereas if you call us like on our biggest dumpster, we'll give you a 3,000 pound weight allowance. And people will often, you know, if we're on the phone, they're like, oh, this other company is going to offer me 6,000 pounds. And I'm like, you will never get to 6,000. You will never get anywhere. You probably won't even get to 3,000 pounds. Are shingles in there? Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like. Bowling balls? People just don't know, yeah. you know. And so uh, we developed our weight limits um, to be lower, which allows our prices to be lower to kind of fit people who are just, you know, are doing these projects. And we also offer as little as a 24-hour rental. Because um, a lot of people, you know, if you're, you know, demoing your own bathroom and you just throw it in the garage because you don't have anywhere to put it. Yep. Um, we're like, yeah, we'll just drop off the dumpster and you can just in one night, just throw the stuff into the dumpster. We'll come get it the next day. And that way the people are paying really cheap as opposed to paying for three weeks of time that they don't need it for, you know, flexible options. Yeah. So yeah. we're very like for the customer. Like I always view it as how, you know, traditionally things are is that there's the dumpster or waste industry and the companies are making the person fit into it where well, we're making the industry fit to a person like kind of opposite like that, sure. you know? And so that, that's why people, you know, this year has been a good year for us because like the word has gotten out there and people are kind of understanding like, Hey, I don't need to pay for a bunch of stuff I'm not going to use, you know? And mm -hmm. we're like, yeah, why would you, you know? That makes sense. So you sound, sound like you stay pretty busy uh, watching the Lions, spending time with your kid and working. Like, what else What else does Kyle do? Um, Kyle likes watching TV. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a pastime. It's just when I was a kid, that's what we'd all do. We'd all get together in the living room, you know, after you do your what homework shows? or whatever. Uh, oh, back in the day, we'd be watching Friends. We'd be watching you know, all like the TV sitcoms. These days... There's way too much content out. You know what I mean? There's yeah. like so much TV to watch. So me and my wife actually get in trouble because we'll start too many shows at one time. Yep. And then you go back to one. You're like, wait, what was happening even? You know, um, but I'm, I'm into like sci-fi type shows. She is not so much into sci-fi sure. shows. So we have to go back and forth where, you know, maybe we'll watch like a drama or like a sci-fi show. And then, you know, maybe the next week she's like, I need to watch really bad reality TV. And so then I have to suck it up on that one. And be oh, like, she watches, my wife watches 90 day fiance and oh, some of yeah. that's actually really funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. She got me. Ah, and this is the worst part too. I've been a hardcore anti bachelor slash bachelorette person my whole life. I'm like, mm. I'm never going to watch it. It's trash TV. I can't do it. 
And lo and behold, she got me sucked into it where I just watch it to like, I'm like, is this real? Like, are you these people- watch to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, are these people crazy? Like, what? <laughs> so, so yeah, she sucked me into some of that stuff. But yeah, we get into, you know, the reality. Um, we're, we both have the same sense of humor. So we do watch a lot of comedy and, you know, stuff like that together. So uh, it's, we're a good TV watching couple for sure. Yeah. What's one piece of advice you could get to give to somebody when they're starting a business? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so if you are going the route of having a business partner, then that's both like rewarding and frustrating, right? Because we're Americans, so we're very individualistic, which, you know, in the business world, if you're owning a business means I want to do everything my way and it makes sense to me. And so, so if you have a business partner, you really gotta, you gotta put yourself back in like elementary school version of yourself where everything was a group project, you know, and you had to learn how to work with people and go, yeah, I guess not all of my ideas are going to get used all the time. And you gotta be cool with it, you know, because the other person, you know, hopefully if you're going to, partner up with somebody they're smart you know so they're get, they got a good ideas too you know and you have to kind of take your ego out of it and be like okay like they're not going to just come up with stupid ideas that are going to destroy the business um so you i find the same goal yeah, yeah exactly you know and you, you got to be good communicating um i we've heard a lot from you know you bump into people at uh, trade events and whatnot where a lot of people say like oh you can't be friends if you're going to have a business partner, you shouldn't be friends first. And I'm like, nah, I, I think you can be friends first, you know, first, if you're good you gotta at mutual respect. Yeah. You sure. got to have respect for each other. You know, you just got to separate like the, you know, we're good friends, no matter what happens, you know, even if something happens and I get mad at the business side of what you did, like we're still friends, you know? And I, I think a lot of people are probably just not as good at that, you know, where they're like, I'm mad at him in business life and I'm mad at him in real life because of it, you know? So I would give that advice to anybody of just being able to, you know, be multifaceted in how you think about stuff. Um, And if you're going to go it alone, um, I would say get ready to lose your mind a little bit, you know, because it's like if you don't want a business partner because you really want that control, it's like there's nobody else, you know, You, you literally have control of everything, you know? And I think a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into you know, running a business. Cause you know, in our business, you might just think, okay, I'm going to come in in the morning and I'll make sure the orders are good to go. I'll deliver the dumpsters. Maybe I'll make a video, maybe I'll, whatever, then I'll go home. It's like, no, you got to pay the bills. You know, you got to, where are the dumpsters going? Yeah. You market. I mean, yeah. I totally get it. So, um, I'm actually reading a book right now called rocket fuel. Are you familiar with this book? I have not heard of so it. So it's basically about, um, visionaries and integrators so there's two different people that run a company and you can be either one of those people um visionary is the guy that comes up with the ideas and the integrator is the one that kind of implements and um lots of big businesses have those two roles in them um like walt disney right so walt disney had a, a partner um that nobody ever talks about but he wanted it that way uh-huh. he didn't want to be the guy out front um, that everybody knew he wanted to be the guy behind the scenes that was running everything. So yeah, um, it's been right. I'm about three quarters through the book, but it's, it's really good. And it's given me a lot of like ideas on how to work better with the people that are involved in my business and um, uh, figuring out how to delegate and to better manage and grow. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if you want to get to that next level, um, you, you guys are probably not going to be doing the same thing right. all the time. So it's about finding how you can best work together. I would say you should pick that book up and buy one for him too. Yeah, I, I like it. I like, cause that's exactly where we're going. So that's a, a good recommendation. Um, for sure. Other big real estate teams have actually told me like, that's the book they like seen a ton of change in their business. Once they started implementing things from that book and um, I'm, I'm seeing it, um, but I haven't started by implementing everything. I'm not even through the book, but I'm excited about it. And I, I don't tell a lot of people about the books I read. Um, I don't think I've done that yet in a podcast, but um, I, I would check that one out. I yeah. Think it would help you. So, I'm into it. Um, do you have any like business role models or influences on you or your career path? 
Oh, geez. Let's see here. Um, well, I did learn a lot from um, the family that started Two Men in a Truck. Uh, sure. When I first joined the corporate office, they were still pretty pretty involved, you know. Yep. So um, they're the, the two men are like two brothers, essentially, and the, their mom started it. And with them, I guess you'd say. And, you know, so you learn a lot from, because they're two different people. So you learn a lot about, you know, kind of who had the ideas like you were just mentioning yeah. who integrated the ideas like where how the whole the whole history happened um so yeah i learned a lot about a lot of the things i i've taken into dumpster divers is kind of based off that you know like seeing how something is or how it could be and just going like hey i'm gonna bridge the gap you know so i learned a lot about i guess you'd say trailblazing because one of the parts of two minute truck story is like way back in the 80s someone was like hey you should franchise this business and back then like franchising wasn't such a big thing big, yeah I, um or you know maybe it was but not as publicized or whatnot but um they were like why would we franchise a moving industry or a moving company like statewide or nationwide or? nationwide and international actually because they have some in canada and some in like the uk and they started in lansing yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah so that's that's i did their big influences i guess you'd say because i'm just trying to redo that with us you know so um yeah just learned a lot about how to take good ideas from uh because you know they learned ideas from people along their way so one of my big things is like taking the ego out of your life you know where if somebody has a good idea or a good input i think a lot of people would just go like no nah, i got i got to figure it out like i know what i'm gonna do and it's like yeah but there's a million ways to do the same thing you know so you might as well learn from anybody you can about you know the best ways to do stuff you might even learn what not to do right yeah yeah so um what's one question that i haven't asked you that you wish i would have i didn't i didn't think about that um i get okay hold on i guess i guess a good question would be why why do you do what you do which the answer to that is i want to influence other people's lives indirectly you know what i mean like you can be like a motivational speaker or whatever and people are like oh yeah like i they directly told me about something but i want to kind of like i mentioned like rebuild middle america so that's kind of like indirect where um well a little direct but indirect um in the way that your web is just gaining people or whatever um but indirectly i my what i like to do is give help people clean up their houses like you know like there's a lot of emotion attached to it and and a lot of the time and you don't really think about it like if you just see a dumpster in someone's driveway you're like ah they're cleaning stuff out but like maybe like something big happened you know maybe a divorce happened or a death happened or you know something happened in their lives and they became a hoarder or they became yeah anything could happen you know what i mean and so it seems simple to just like drop off a dumpster but like sometimes you're the stuff that they put in it is like one chapter of their lives and you're literally taking it away. So like you're you kind of how work hard. You don't know how hard they worked for that. Yeah. Junk, right. Yeah. So. And so we're kind of like push indirectly pushing people into a new chapter in their life, which is why like I get like pumped, I guess you'd say about because dumpsters and junk is like not sexy. It's kind of boring. It seems very simple, but it's like there's a lot of things behind it, you know, that you can change somebody's life by just giving them a pretty baby blue dumpster you know what I yeah mean? what about the the guys that work with you um how are you impacting their lives yeah so actually uh we're a team of three right now um okay. we do have kind of some partners that we work with um what the, we're getting a, a contract hopefully pretty soon here where we are going to start demoing out like fire situation like where houses were on fire or whatever sure. so um we kind of have like partnerships with people that we can use their guys too but uh, the main is the main is there's just three of us and so um Emilio and I started it like I mentioned but we brought on our friend Tony uh who we also used to work with at two men in a truck and um we've just been good friends ever since then and uh he actually works this is not his only gig I guess you'd say he's also a personal trainer too um but one of the big things he does is like financial teaching or financial help um, okay. for people or whatnot. So one of the reasons we wanted to bring him on is because we needed help for, for one, you know, because we grew a lot this year. And, um, but we also wanted to teach him the business so he knew kind of how it worked and kind of like 
how the money comes in and goes out and yeah. kind of where you need to put everything in your buckets or whatnot. Um, but we're going to teach them that. So once we get, um, you know, we start doing, you know, trying to sell the first franchise and whatnot, he can run the location for us, which will help us free up our time. But then when we're bigger as like a corporate entity, we're going to take him with us so that, you know, as I mentioned, we want to have uh, just regular guys starting this. So we want to offer them like financial help, in not like giving them money, but like, you know, helping yeah. understanding like, Hey, you know, if you do this right, you might be like a $500,000 company in like two years, you know? So, you know, if you're just a regular guy, you might be like, that's a lot of money, you you're know? Teaching. Yeah. yeah. So we want to be able to offer them support and like understanding that, you know, the zeros are going to get bigger and, you know, you can't just be spending money wherever you want because you have it coming in now. So we want to be able to guide people, that are just kind of like, hey, I, I believe in what you're talking about. I want to, I want to own my own business. So we're gonna give them that help in understanding the, the financial side of it. So Sweet. that's why we brought him on. Um, I'm really excited about that because it would be on the flip side somewhat scary just handing the keys over to somebody who might not know exactly how to spend their money. You know? Yeah, and just um, getting to know them and make sure that you guys have. Um, are in alignment and mm -hmm. you know decisions because if he's going to be in a an important part of your future you want to make sure he understands the past right? right yeah so that's awesome so um how can someone get a hold of you if um they wanted to learn more about your business or um perhaps hire you yeah for sure so our phone number is 616-375-9962 um if you're an old school type person and you want to chit chat and ask some questions uh give us a call like i said we answer the phone which is nice and yeah. uh either me or emilio will answer and you know we like having a good time and you know joke around with people so that's a good way to learn some information um but as i mentioned before our website is like completely self-service um so that's dumpster divers llc.com sweet and so you know you can you know find us on there and you can read all about our story and learn about the dumpsters and how big they are um we built ours like boxes so a lot of times we show up and they look different than like your standard like really short really long dumpster and so people can see what they look like you know learn about what can go in and what can't go in and what stuff is hazardous to go in the landfill and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and you can also find us on Facebook too, where you can watch me be an idiot for, you know, 30 seconds at a time. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> So I really appreciate you coming in Kyle and uh, learning more about your business. And I hope uh, our viewers or the people in Grand Rapids informed learned a little bit more about what you do and what you plan to do, I think is even more important. Um, and uh, thanks for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you guys, this was awesome. All right, and um, to everyone else, please like and subscribe to our podcast and um, check out our next episodes. See you next time.